What is up guys, it's the NJB here, and today I'm gonna make another Champions League video, and this time I'm just gonna predict the final. So, before I do that, I just wanna say, this year in the Champions League has been insane. I mean, just everything about it has been insane. No one would have expected the top four teams in the Champions League to be Liverpool, Ajax, um, Barca, and Tottenham. I mean, in the beginning of the season, I, really, I thought the winner of the Champions League would be Okay, I would say Liverpool, but I think it would it would have been Juve, Liverpool, Atletico, and probably Todd Spiron in there. Because those are the teams that could have won the Champions League if Real Madrid didn't knock them out or beat them in the final. I mean, Madrid knocked um, Juventus out about, I believe, like twice. And they knocked Spiron out so many times. Um, um, same, they knocked Atletico out of the Champions League, I believe, in quarter or semi-finals a few years ago and then they knocked him out twice in two separate finals I mean Real Madrid has just been just been that team and now that they haven't been doing well and they're not challenging for the Champions League this season it allows everyone else to give it a try so it's a bit more like the Premier League where it's more um, you have a more diverse options of who's going to win it but I guess Liverpool I would have expected to win it or to get to the stage but Tottenham and Ajax Never, never would have I ever expected them to reach the semifinals. And now Tottenham is going to the final for the first time in their history. That is just incredible. I'm pretty sure, I haven't looked it up, but I'm pretty sure I don't have to. I don't think City has ever been to the final before. And if Tottenham do manage to win it, then they'd have more Champions Leagues than Arsenal and City. So that would be something, and that would be a great achievement for Tottenham. So that's that I just want to say it's incredible um, with both games that went on um, Liverpool I know I didn't make any prediction videos because I was, guess I just I had a lot of stuff that I was doing so sorry about that but let me tell you guys what my predictions were before the game before the first leg and then after the first legs so I predicted Liverpool to beat Barca um, some YouTube videos I commented and said I think and when Liverpool play Barca, people are going to see that Barca isn't as good as they think they are, and Messi will look pretty useless. So, after the first leg, I was very disappointed in Liverpool. I mean, I saw the lineup. I saw Andre Gomez starting at right back, and Wijnaldum as a striker, center forward, and false nine, whatever. I, I knew Liverpool. I knew this was going to be a tough game for them because Klopp. I mean, just that lineup. I mean, I don't know why you want to put Origi. As the striker or Orgy, or however you say his name, just use him as a striker. Just play a striker. Don't bother just mixing it up. Just fill the position with someone who's good. He doesn't need to be great, just good. And then Gomez at right back. I don't understand the logic. He's he's mainly a center back. And Alexander Arnold has been playing great the whole season. Why would he do that? So on top of that, Gomez hasn't been playing the whole season. He just came back from injury. And you want to use him against Barca at the camp now? It's ridiculous. So, the scoreline in that game, I don't know. I think the problem with Liverpool mainly had to deal with Klopp. And after that game, I really doubted it. I didn't see Liverpool coming back from that. I thought Barca might get another goal to go ahead, and then that would be it. I thought Liverpool would win, a, win the game, but they'd lose on the aggregate or away goals rule. And I was wrong. Liverpool, the way they played in the second leg was how I wanted them to play in the first leg. And they managed to beat Barca. So I should have stuck with my predictions from the beginning. I shouldn't have let any games change my opinion. So I'm going to keep that in mind next time. But I did change my prediction. So I was right initially before the both fixtures. But then I was wrong after I changed it. So that's that. With Ajax and Tottenham, I kept the same opinion through and through. And I was wrong. I thought Ajax would beat Tottenham just because... I didn't think Tottenham really had it in them to really challenge Ajax without Kane. And Son, I mean, the fact that he missed the first leg, I thought that would be big enough. But turns out, I was wrong again. Um, Tottenham stepped it up and they were able to defeat Ajax in a 90 minute goal or goal at the very end of the game. It's just incredible. So, good job for Liverpool for coming back. And good job to uh, Tottenham for defeating Ajax. Um, honestly, both teams are similar quality between Tottenham and Ajax. So I think that it really could have gone either way. But I really thought Ajax would have pulled through, but they didn't. 
But either way, I'm just glad that it's going to be an all English final. The Champions League is finally coming back to England, so I'm happy about that. It's very good. So England were back on top. So I guess when they were saying football's coming home, I guess they meant the Champions League back in the World Cup. But either way, I'm going to stop being a nationalistic. Um, one more thing I wanted to add about the Barca and Liverpool game. One thing I didn't really consider is that for one, Barca has been playing pretty horribly away from home all Champions League. I mean, they couldn't, they only beat United by one goal and they couldn't even beat Lyon. And then they turned it around in, uh, in their home games to beat um, United by three goals in, at the camp now, then they beat Lyon. I believe they scored seven goals or six or seven goals. It was a pretty big goal um, gap and margin by them. So. As you can see, Barca, when teams only do well at home, they cannot win the tournament. I mean, we've seen Bayern do that like a few years ago with, with um, Pep Guardiola. They were having some average games. They might lose one away from home. Then at home, they thrash people like 5 now. I believe they did that to Porto. They did that to Arsenal a few times. I remember Arsenal beat them at the Emirates like 2-1. And then in Bayern, they just trashed them. don't remember the score, but I remember, I remember it was a pretty big margin. So... If you can't beat a team both home and away, or you can't play well in both legs, then you're probably not going to get to the final. That's just how I see it. I mean, if you look at Real Madrid over the years, yeah, there have been some shady things done by the refs, but still, they did well in both legs. So, that's kind of what I have to say about that. Also, Liverpool really don't play well in the first fixture. They usually do well in the second fixture. So, that's a weakness for Liverpool because it means that they're not ready to to play anyone just like out of the blue like they have to get used to how the other team plays first before they can adapt to them and then exploit their weaknesses and play better the next leg and i think that could be a factor in the final so it's going to be liverpool and tottenham i first let me just say what i think so or let me predict let me just explain my reasoning behind making predictions so tottenham um, at the moment, they just have to win one more game, I believe, to make sure they secure a top four, four place in the Premier League. So they have two things to fight for for the rest of the season. It's top four and the Champions League final. And it's crazy that Tottenham are up there. But honestly, with everything Pochettino has been doing and how good the squad are, it is about time that they've got to, the, to this point. I mean, in my opinion, I think um, quarterfinals was good enough for Tottenham, but it's, the Champions League finals or the full finals, that's incredible. So, when talking about this match, we have to remember that Liverpool have beaten Tottenham twice already this season, both times in the league, and they, I believe it's been by the same score. So, it's been 2 1, Liverpool's won both matches. So, Tottenham is kind of going into this already having lost to Liverpool twice this season. That could be an advantage because usually when you play the same team multiple times, it's easy for the team that's lost or played worse in those games, or yeah, lost. It's easy for that team to turn it around and kind of exploit your weaknesses. So it's kind of like if you lose to someone a few a few times, like you have to beat them at least once, right? I mean, you you just have that like you understand how they play, you understand your teammates, and you know what went, what went wrong for you in the beginning and in the last time. So you're ready to turn it around, and you have a point to prove. The only issue with them. I would say without Kane, that will be a problem. But I think as long as their top players play well, I think if Lucas Moura, I say Lucas Moura might be one of the key players. Um, Deli Ali, um, he's managed to step it up in the league. He hasn't looked so hot, but in the Champions League, he's been playing. Oh, he's been playing pretty well at least in this last game. So I think as long as their players play well and they play together, then they can. They might be able to beat Liverpool. I wouldn't say by more than a goal, but they could beat them by one goal if they're playing well. But it's similarly to Liverpool, Tottenham, they didn't play well in the first leg. I mean, Ajax, well, I guess Ajax only beat them by goals. So the fact that they weren't able to defeat Ajax in the first leg kind of lets you know that maybe it takes some time for them to adjust to the challenge and take on and defeat the opponent. But the final is only one game, so they're going to have to make sure they can do it all in one game and they're ready and they go out ready to win and not defend. 
I think Tottenham does have a stronger midfield. I mean, Deli Ali, um, Sissoko, Ranyama, um, Ericsson too. I mean, these guys are great on the ball. And unlike mid, uh, Liverpool's midfielders, their sole purpose isn't just to get the ball to the forwards. Like, they get the ball, they hold on to it, they create plays, they dribble upfield, they take shots. I mean, these guys are much, are much more, um, i say they're much more present, they're much more dynamic when they play than Liverpool's midfielders. I mean, Liverpool's midfielders, their main purpose is just to um, be the bridge between the defense and the attack, but they don't really hold on to the ball like you would have seen from like Modric, and that's one weakness that Liverpool do have. But enough talking about Tottenham. Tottenham is just a good team all around, but they are missing their key player, which is Kane. So this is my predictions on how Tottenham can win it. For Liverpool, I'd say it's really down to how Klopp plays them. I mean, in the first leg against Barca, he clearly wasn't confident on his choices. I mean, Andre Gomez and um, Wijnaldum, just using those two players, kind of messed up Liverpool and just held back their attack and made sure they weren't as creative. They got a lot of chances, but none of the chances were chances you'd expect, like a like an average player to score. It was only it was only chances that you'd expect, like someone like Messi or Ronaldo to score. And the fact that Mane wasn't able to score him, I wouldn't really say it's horrible, like a horrible um, like performance from him. I just say that in Barca, they did their best to defend against them and he wasn't able to finish. Their one chance from Salah, to be honest, the defender could have blocked it just in case he actually did get it on target rather than on the post. But either way, I don't think Liverpool created enough chances that would have just required a simple finish but with Liverpool I think Klopp just has to make the right choices in the starting lineup and I think that's really all he has to do he also has to make sure his team play with the intensity and try to keep the ball out of the hands of Tottenham's midfielders so Tottenham do like to do a high press they pressure you all over the pitch and they defend very tightly and they're very good at shifting between defense and attack also the possession game is pretty good, so they will be able to pass the ball and maintain possession a lot. But if Liverpool can do possession the same way they did against Barca, then I think Tottenham will have uh, troubles. And if they just utilize their forwards, so Origi and I want to say Salah or uh, Mane, I say those two will be the most dangerous. Um, I'm pretty sure Salah would be back, so we can include him too. And Firmino. Um, if Firmino is still injured by that time, I wouldn't risk playing him. I just stick with Orgy, and yeah, I think that's how it's gonna go. But if I want to say who's gonna win it, I'm gonna have to go with Liverpool. I would really love for Tottenham to win it, and I'm not really a fan of either of the teams. But I'm English, so I do want it. So I don't really mind who really wins. But I think if Tottenham wins it, then that would be incredible. If Liverpool win it, it would be a great finale to them for their uh, for their great season they've been having, and they've been a very strong team. And if they win it, then I think 100% one of their players will win the Ballon d'Or, maybe even Van Dijk. So that'd be great. But if Tottenham win it too, or instead, that would be good for Tottenham, good for London, good for the Tottenham fans who haven't had a cup possibly ever. I think. I know they're I know they haven't won anything so that would be incredible but I think it's gonna go to Liverpool I think Liverpool just had the edge over them they've beaten them twice already this season um, their attack is pretty much unstoppable but yeah Tottenham will show them up I say the score is probably gonna be the same 2-1 Liverpool win um, if the score is any different I think Liverpool will win just by one goal and yeah those are my predictions for the Champions League final. So Liverpool takes it. And compared to the beginning of the season, the teams, from the teams I said that were going to win it, I said it had to be Juventus because they got Ronaldo and the team overall is strong. But I guess I, I there's no way I could have seen Dybala's form taking a massive hit this season compared to previous seasons. I thought Ronaldo and Dybala would have just been that insane attacking duo and they would have dominated the Champions League and the league. And while they did do well in the league, um, Dybala hasn't done enough to help them in the Champions League. So 
they should have relied on they should have probably bought another player to help them out but as i said i really thought dibala and ronaldo would have made the team stronger and i think if dibala was playing well then they could have defeated ix but didn't go down that way um liverpool i really said it just because they've been to the final already and they're a strong side and they're getting stronger so it's hard to see them not getting up there and atletico bayern those were my other like if my top two teams didn't get up or win it those are my, my other options it was mainly just because madrid has knocked them out before and now without madrid there they could end up going there and winning it and taking the whole competition bayern kind of just fell apart the team just did not play well they looked like they weren't trying anymore and they really deserve to get knocked out also the coach not really the best coach for them as you can see in the league Atletico, they made too many changes to their team and I think that over maybe a season maybe next season or season after they'll get more unity and they'll start performing better in the Champions League and possibly possibly the league as well so those are my opinions those are my predictions to what you guys think in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next one cheers mates